to a new edition of France in Focus. I'm Nadia Shabi, and as you may have gathered from my surroundings, this week we've crossed the Mediterranean to take you to Tunisia, where we're looking into that untranslatable word, francophonie. Well, we've come here to the city of Sousse for the region's first ever francophonie festival. So what is francophonie and how much of a footprint does it have worldwide? Take a look. There are 274 million French speakers in the world. For France's Emmanuel Macron, speaking French opens doors in an increasingly globalized world. But what many don't realize is that there are more French speakers in Africa than Europe. In 2014, there were 150 million francophones in Africa, but less than 100 million in Europe. There's another 20 million from the Americas and the Caribbean, followed by 2.5 million in the Middle East and Asia. Finally, around 1 million are living in the South Pacific. By 2050, Africa could account for 85% of the Francophone world. But according to the International Organization for la Francophonie, those numbers could change depending on how the organization's 54 member states choose to reinforce the language's teaching. With a potential for 700 million speakers, French could become the most widely spoken language in the world. But for now, it ranks fifth worldwide, behind Arabic, English, Spanish and Mandarin, with 848 million speakers. Well, we're now at the newly opened Alliance Française in the capital, Tunis, and I'm joined by one of the linguists who's taking part in the Sousse Festival. Samir Marzouki, hello, thank you for being with us. Bonjour. Now, Tunisia is staging its first francophone festival. How do you explain this renewed interest in the French language and francophonie? We're seeing a renewed interest in the French language in Tunisia, thanks to a summit being held here in 2020. Tunisia carries an old tradition of upholding and using the French language. It became one of the founding states of the French-speaking Commonwealth in 1970, under President Habib Bourguiba. So Tunisia is regaining its position as a leader in the French-speaking field. It's something to celebrate, if you ask me. Now, French was long seen in Tunisia, but also uh, in other francophone countries in Africa, as the language of the elite and quite elitist, even. Is that still the case today? I think that is still the case. Except now, those that are part of the elite have to broaden their skills. In my day, the elite mastered Arabic and French. That's still the case. But today, they also have to be fluent in English. If you were interviewing my son, he would answer you in English, not in French like me. Now, during his visit to inaugurate uh, this building, President Macron called for French to be viewed as a local language, uh, perhaps to shed some of the neo-colonial undertones. Uh, is that realistic? Can French be distanced from France and from its heritage and its past? I don't see the point in distancing the French language from France. Speaking French is the reality here. I started my studies in 1957. We were independent from France at that point, but I was educated in Arabic and in French. French is taught in almost 100% of schools, and it's useful from an economic standpoint. We trade mainly with French-speaking countries, including France. Of course, I'm a francophile, a French teacher, a French writer. But even those who aren't like me still need the French language. Because we live in a world where having several languages under your belt is a huge asset. And like English, it's becoming a business tool, as you said. Does it keep its political and cultural side as well? English remains, for the most part, a language of business. 
Arabic is our cultural language, but there is a real cultural life for the French language in Tunisia, which isn't the case for English. And I don't see that changing for years to come. But in Tunisia and other francophone countries, does French perhaps take on a local colour? For francophone Tunisian writers, the Arabic dialect has a huge influence on their French, as Arabic is their mother tongue. Writers and other artists can get creative with the French language, but outside of that it is very similar to what you hear in France. That's less the case in sub-Saharan Africa, but it's still pretty close to standard French. Well, the political and economic aspects of francophonie are taking on a whole new dimension in one African nation, Ghana, where French could become a real alternative to English. Nous allons mettre en commun et procéder à la correction. Merci, bonne chance. In this Alliance Française, a record 3,000 students are enrolled this year. Among the most popular sessions is this training course for bilingual executive assistants. French is a major asset for these prospective job seekers. More than half the students are employed directly after three years of studies. We want our students to understand that being bilingual is really important. It's what makes you stand out these days. When you're dealing with two candidates, one who's bilingual and the other who's not, you don't even hesitate. The country, opening up to the French-speaking world, has become a flagship base for multinationals interested in its francophone neighbours. At this automotive manufacturer, the sales manager is looking for more and more bilingual Ghanaians. Our zone covers the four English-speaking countries of the region, plus 15 French-speaking countries. So it's essential that we can develop in the French-speaking countries, and obviously by mastering the language, it's much easier. Kafui, a 40-year-old French-speaking Ghanaian, has the ideal profile. What are you doing up there? Perfect. At ease in both English and French, he landed a sales manager position here three years ago. I have an advantage over others in the team, as there are not many of them who speak French as well. It will help me progress in the company. French is set to become compulsory in primary schools from the start of the new school year. With an expected increase in learners, more teachers will therefore need to be trained. More teachers, but especially more qualified teachers. That's the goal of this training session for French teachers that is held here several times a year. The objective is to equip them with additional skills and get rid of bad habits. If the teacher can understand all these skills, he will be able to provide better lessons. His speaking skills will also be stronger. The compulsory education of French to the country's youngest citizens is a project dear to new president Nana Akufu Addo. It's a decision that could see Ghana having closer ties to its francophone neighbors in the years to come. a closer look at the cultural aspect of francophonie with Franco-Tunisian singer Noël Ben Krayem. Hello. Hello, bonjour. Now, you sing in both Arabic and French. What does that bring to your range as an artist? Well, it creates a wide range because we're talking about very different textures. Each language has a distinctive sound, so it's like being given more tools to work with. In Arabic, I can use full-throated sounds, and French is much more nasal. And confronting those two things is like being an artist who has access to a variety of colors. And do you write differently in both languages? 
Yes, of course, because each language also has its own specific structure. A language reflects a way of thinking, of relating to the world. So, for instance, Arabic is full of metaphors. It paints a picture. So even when I write in French, I try to add a bit of that. Symbols, proverbs, and I feel that brings a poetic dimension to French. What does French bring, then? French is perhaps more precise, which is interesting. And I think that precision has an impact on a melody, which in turn brings a sort of down-to-earth quality to Arabic. And you're participating in the Sousse Festival. What's your relationship with Francophonie? I'd say that my view of la francophonie is one of French as a language that's enhanced by others. It's almost like a form of creole, a melting pot that combines with other dialects. Even in Arabic, I like to borrow words from different dialects, because in France I spend time with Algerians and Egyptians, and I find a language is rich when it explores all its potential. And French really does that, I think. At least that's how I see it. Noël, thank you very much. From the stunning heights of Sidi Boussaid, we leave this edition. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to France 24.